this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. A very quick unboxing vid of a couple of um, orchids I've just bought off eBay. A seller I've used before, and um, I'd like to have a word with the seller because so far the seller seems to be selling nice plants. But sometimes the particular plant in question has the expression you will receive plant like in the pictures. If you put that expression in your advert, I will not buy from you. However, if you put an expression like you will receive plant in pictures one and two and three, I can see what I'm getting and I'll at least consider your plant. Um, a word for anybody who sells on eBay. If you've got four or five plants and you want to sell them, then sell them as individual plants, not a collective. People like to see what they're getting. Or I do. I like to see the plant. I'd prefer to pick it up and turn it upside down and get it out of the pot, but you can't do that on eBay. Anyway, let's see what we've got. Lots of paper. That's good. And then inside the two plants that I've purchased. Okay, uh, right, let's see if we can get it out quick. I've got a lot to do today. This does need to be quick, quite honestly. It really does. <coughs> but one of them is an unknown plant to me. Never heard of it. But I quite like the look of its gro growth habit. Um, you know me, I like my mounts. So anything that produces lots of aerial roots and seems to have a creeping habit to me has got Mount Me written all over it and um, as a consequence it attracts my attention. And here we have a candidate for a mount. Uh, oh, well, that's as good as you're going to get <laughs> at the moment. If I mount it I may do a vid, although my mounting vids are getting uh, probably tedious by now. Right, it's an epidendrum and it's I can't read that, but I'll put a pop-up. It's something like polybulbum or something like that. But anyway, I'll put, I'll put the name in the description. <laughs> I do like that. It's a lolly stick. You know, we have to be inventive, us orchid people. It's a lolly stick. You know, the, the, the person may have kitties who have ice lollies and save the sticks and write on them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I like that. Nice little touch. Anyway, that's the plant. I'm pleased with that plant. It's healthy. I hope those are not bugs. No, they're little bits of sphagnum. Jolly good. Yeah, I like that little plant. And that says Mount Me. It's got Mount Me written all over it, quite honestly. So that's one. You don't need that flipping great thing. So there we go, that's one. And the other one, strictly speaking, is not for me. Um, my daughter grows orchids the same as I do, but she is very limited as to what she can grow. Whatever she grows is not going to get bright light, yeah? So we have to go for the shadier types. She also grows them in her flat, which means her temperatures don't vary that much. But it doesn't get cold, you know, so um, things like um, Balanopsis are perfect for her. Um, you know, they're tolerant orchids, they'll put up with a lot of, uh, I won't say abuse, because that's an insult, but, um, you know, they, they put up with a lot. Um, she grows a few paths as well, pedalums, and she gets away with those, you know, again, relatively low light, although they do like, I believe, a little bit more than uh, Phalaenopsis will put up with. But this is uh, an Oncidium twinkle, and out of the twinkles, it's the one she likes the best. And um, it's called cinnamon. And the cinnamon is nothing to do with the fragrance or anything. It's to do with the blooms. I'll see if I can get that in there. You're not going to get a good look at the blooms, basically. But they are a brownie-orange colour. I mean, this has actually got a spike on it. And there are some buds forming, which if they don't blast, you know, there will, there will be some blooms on it. So it's got a little flower spike anyway. And um, fragrance on twinkles is high. Whichever variety you get, whichever colour you get, the fragrance is always pretty good for such tiny little flowers. So, again, a good-looking little plant. Well, let's get that uh, 
I like it when people do actually take care that the um, media isn't going to all flop out of the pot in transit. But it's always a nuisance when trying to actually um, do an unboxing video. That's why I've used a tripod. I need two hands. Trying to do this sort of thing with one hand is tediously, you know, awkward to say the least. That's a nice little plant. Yeah. That's a good little twinkle. It's got good roots in that pot. I can see them going all around the top. It's got some new growths coming. New growths equals more spikes. And at the moment it's got a spike that has gone over relatively recently and it's one remaining spike on that nice mature bulb down there. So a nice little plant. It's a healthy plant. It's bug free with my visual inspection. Um, obviously I don't know what's in the pot but that's in a bark type mix that looks reasonable and mm, there's a slight mushroomy smell but that could be where it's been in a confined space. You know, anything that gets damp will have that smell so don't write off your media immediately. Give it a chance to air itself if you've had something in storage. Now another thing from this cellar, I bought this plant on Wednesday. It was dispatched on Thursday and it arrived on Friday. It doesn't get any better than that. That's the best turnaround time from eBay that I've ever had. Now okay it's a UK seller you know so it only had to travel from one part of the UK to the other but even that can take a week nowadays depending on which courier you use. But yeah okay two little plants. Um, I might do this now while I've, um, while I've just got a tripod set up looking at a box. Um, there are videos around at the moment going into the, the um, Fusarium virus. It's about, it's always about, it never goes away. Um, you take precautions against viruses, we all do. Sterilise your tools, some people go to the extent of wearing gloves and change their gloves every time they change plants and things like that. I can't do that, that's not practical for me. But I do sterilise my tools, I do make sure my media is clean, I do make sure that my pots are clean and sterile. Okay, so as far as my equipment is concerned, yeah, good stuff, I'm on top of it. But then I turn around and share water and blow the whole thing, basically. That is one of the easiest ways to spread this flipping virus, quite honestly. Now, Zane has just done a very nice video, just him talking, but it's elaborate enough to give you the details of what this virus is about, how it spreads, what it actually is, and potentially the ways to avoid spreading it amongst your plants. And basically, the only way to stop viruses spreading amongst your plants is to keep them in isolation. Yeah, well, this is not always possible, is it? You know, we've all got limited space, and unless you've got a large amount of space between every single plant to stop anything traveling through the air, and you, 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 you use unique water for every single pot, and make sure the water that runs through the pot is self-contained and then taken away from the environment as fast as possible. There are practical ways to limit it, but I don't believe anybody is capable of stopping it. If you bring a plant in that's got that virus already in it, it could even be a carrier where the plant itself will survive for years and years and years, but it's now in your collection. And once it's in there, it's capable of spreading. And it is difficult to totally stop. And if you buy a plant, okay, you go through your quarantine. How long do you quarantine a plant? A couple of weeks? A couple of months? A couple of years? How long do you pro uh, actually quarantine your plants? Now, that particular virus can hang around for a while before a plant even shows, shows any symptoms at all. So if you buy a new plant and it's got it, you've brought it into your collection whether you like it or not. The chances of killing it before it actually gets into the tissues of that plant are practically zero because it's prob probably already in the tissues. And those tissues can be highly resistant to the effects, the symptoms. So quarantine, yeah, all very well. It's good for the living bugs that you can see on the outside of the plant and should be done. 
you know, that should be done. You know, you can get somebody's just sprayed their plant and got rid of all the mealy bugs and that's brilliant. Well, there could be a few eggs lurking, but they'll show quickly. Yeah, they'll, they'll show up and then you can deal with them as part of your quarantine. But this particular virus is the mother of all viruses. If you get it, you've got it. That's it. And you may be able to save an individual plant by hacking away at the thing until you get to good tissue. And even that is not a 100% guarantee. Now, I'm going to do a separate video. I have a Cattleya that is highly suspect, shall we say. It's weak, it's desiccated, but it is producing new growths. And when I got it, it had zero root system. So the new growth is putting up, the energy it's getting prior to a decent root system being established is from the old bulbs. That will desiccate them, yeah? It's sucking all the life out of them to produce its new growths and perpetuate itself. That's how they work, especially cattleyas. But it is a suspect plant. It's a bad one. It was on the lines. It was borderline getting thrown out. And the video I do with it, what I'll do is I'll do it as a, like a repotting video and an investigative video. That's a big long word for only one coffee in the morning. OK, so I'm going to look into this virus. I have a couple of plants that are slightly suspect but most of them during this growing season have pulled up. So whereas they might have been a bit suspect, it's mainly cattleyas, you know what I'm like with cattleyas, I kept repotting them at the wrong time and messing up their flipping root systems, but most of my cattleyas have pulled on this year. Um, I mean, quickly, I'll show you one. Oh. I'm sort of working in amongst piles of plants. That's not a good cattleya, it's a tatty looking cattleya. Look. These leaves are desiccated. They are on the old bulbs. However, if you look at the new growths, like here, they are healthy. That one's even got a sheath. And it's pushed out a reasonable root system. It's still pushing out a root system. Now, I class that as a recovering cattleya. But I would have to put that on the suspect list for a while. I'm not going to hack it to pieces. Well, I will do soon, actually, because the idea is once the new growths become established with their own root systems, I am going to go back and cut the old bulbs off just to tidy the plant up. Well, while I'm doing that, I get to look at a cut rhizome. So I get to check for the likes of this beastie of a virus. But that, I'd class that as a suspect one. I wouldn't say it lacks vigour. I'd say what it has is all the symptoms of a cattleya that lost its root system and is recovering as a consequence of growing some new roots and pushing out some new growths that, to all intents and purposes, look okay. But anyway, I'm going to do a video on the real manky cattleya, which I can't get out at the moment because it's behind the tripod and I'll end up knocking something over because I've only had one coffee and at that stage of the morning I'm what is commonly called flipping clumsy. <laughs> or not up and running properly anyway that was my unboxing video and what I'd like to do I'll do it on the other video because it will be more relevant because it will be an investigation into Viserium we're a community and we need to gather together on this subject there's good videos around Danny's done a good one she got caught with the flipping thing she knows why she knows how that's good but it happened Bumblebee has done videos on it she's had it Others have had an odd plant here and there. I've seen the videos lurking around. What we need to do is get a single point of contact because what I want to do is find out the most susceptible list of plants. So on that video, I'd like everybody that's ever had it, not guessing, definitely knows that they got it. They saw the dreaded purple ring of death, as Zane calls it, which is very appropriate because that's exactly what it is. And we'll get a list of plants that people have had that they know they got Fusarium in. Because I believe there's quite a lot of um, the genera that just don't get it. They might get other types of virus. You know, that's not the only one about, but it is the killer. Um, you know, so let's get a list of the type of plants that are vulnerable. It will help others look at their plants with suspicion. But they'll be able to concentrate on the ones most likely to get that beastie. And as I say, I'll do that on a separate video. When it's going to be, I don't know, because as you all know, from tomorrow morning, I'm going to be sat on a bench getting bored out of my skull. It's called jewellery service. OK, thanks for dropping by. See you again soon. Mm -hmm.